Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you're watching this in black and white and this is of course 4F Beauty. As the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description will have told you, this is the latest instalment of Three Continents, One Palette, starring Mwah, <laughs> the lovely Nona, and the lovely Laura. This particular month is Make You Wink. So, of course, we are using the ooh la la palette. I don't know why I have to say ooh la la like that. It just, it, that's, that's how it comes out. Um, yeah. Ooh la la. Right, I think I've said ooh la la quite enough for one intro. So, if you want to find out exactly what the challenge was that we set ourselves this month because yes there is a challenge uh, that was my stomach if you heard it i apologize it's joining in in the intro because it's clearly not going to get enough attention <laughs> indeed uh, um, if you want to find out exactly how well or otherwise this performed and did i achieve the challenge Oh, there's hailstones outside. Oh, there really is hailstones outside. However, that does not impact whether I made the challenge or not, because, believe it or not, you're about to go back in time to when I started filming this. I know, crazy, time travel, marvellous. So, to find out what this looks like in Glory's Technicolor, and... What uh, what other things I end up blithering about in this film? You're just going to have to... Come on, say it with me. I've been saying it for so long. You've heard it echoed on other channels. Mm -hmm. You've heard it echoed. This is what I don't film when hubby is around. I do apologise. Mm. I was trying to be quiet. Darling, you... No. No. He's about to start juggling crockery. I know what this means. When he's trying to be quiet and juggles crockery, something gets dropped. So, as I have said uh, for many, 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 many months, a years even, and has oft been echoed by other channels, which is what I was trying to say earlier, Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Okay, now you can be as noisy as you like. Yay! Deep joy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, I would have told you in the intro that we are using the Ooh La La palette this month um, in our Three Continents One palette except it's technically Three Continents Two palettes because lovely Laura doesn't have this one so she is going to dupe it in her collection because it just wouldn't be right if she wasn't included in this so I got to choose that we use the pink one this month and then we were like, well, what, what's, what challenge are we setting ourselves this month? Let's face it, none of us actually are allowed to leave the house right now. So we, we don't really care how bad or ridiculous we look. Uh, it's a Sunday when I'm doing this, so there shouldn't be any deliveries. Hubby is in the back garden, mowing the lawn and titifalarious titty nissing about because he... He gets cabin fever, he can't be inside all the time. He, he works outside on his full lift and he, he doesn't he doesn't do being indoors unless he's sitting in front of a film he's enjoying or a program he's enjoying or playing computer games and he did computer games this morning. So, 
sort of probably far too much information. But what else are we going to talk about nowadays? I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. This is still a teaching channel. So my blending skills may be slower than others because of my pain and because I want complete beginners to be able to keep up with me. There's a speed widget. Feel free to use it. Don't moan at me about the speed that I blend or the length of my films. You can see how long the film is when you press play. Don't be having me now. Right. So Nona suggested. Do you see how my mind flips from one to the other? That's fibro for you. It's marvellous. It kind of imitates ADHD, but then you forget what you're saying halfway through and you, you sort of... If you knew how many of those moments I surreptitiously cut out of a film... Some I leave in for your amusement. But Nona suggested that what we do, I haven't even shown you the inside of this yet, is that we use this to do everything. Contour, blush, bronze. Not that I contour, I just bronze them. I bronze in the places you meant to contour and then stick some blush on. But, got to use that. Deep joy. So, I think this one is the probably the most neutral of all of the pinks. I'm probably going to use that as my bronzer. And then go into this next one for the blush. And maybe use that as the highlight. Which leaves me those for my eyes and brows. And maybe lips. I haven't got any dual line to make it into a proper lipstick though. That's the only issue. So, cross that bridge when I come to it. Yes. Right, so, because I'm still a teaching channel, and because I always have mentioned, or as soon as I realised people were confusing deep set eyes with hooded eyes, and the fact that the workarounds for them are very, very different, even though the issues that we suffer are very similar, um, I've, I've always mentioned at the start of my films how to tell the difference between the two and what the workarounds are. Um, nobody else was talking about this to my knowledge at the time which is why I've always made sure to include it in my films this film is no exception I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment where I go through that with you uh, for those of you who've not seen my films before the clip is very up close and personal because when I say I zoom in so you can see what I'm doing I zoom in so you can see what I'm doing right here comes the clip please don't scream at how close my eyes are now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles. That I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using 
glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. And I am back. Hello. Right, I'm going to give my Jeffrey Morphe brushes a bit of a run out today. They're clean, they're just waiting for their deep clean. But I've wiped them off on my microfiber cloth and you'll see there's no powder coming off. That's where I've wiped my brush that I put my base on with. Right, this is the JS8. It is a synthetic blending brush with a medium sized head. Okay. Now the problem is two of these are shimmery, which I know a lot of people have issues with when it comes to using them on the lid. I don't, so I'm going to use them anyway. But I will start off with a matte called a sandbar. I'm not sure I've ever used this on camera yet. Quite, um, quite a reasonable amount of kick up in the pan. So I hope you can see there. But it doesn't worry me because I just go back in and, you know, pick up Pick up the kick up to build up the coverage. Right, as always, hold the brush right at the very end and we'll begin with our Viennese waltz of blending natural turns, flicker in the middle and reverse turns to come back. If that means nothing to you, this means nothing for me. Oh, keep blending. Just keep watching. It'll make perfect sense, I hope. Do you know Vienna never got to number one in the UK? And do you know what song kept it off the top spot? What's the matter, you eh? Got no respect. Why you think you do? Why you look so sad? It's a nice so bad. It's a nice place. I shut up your face. By Joe Dolce, who, as far as I'm aware, wasn't even a bloody Italian. And it kept Vienna from the number one spot. Like, really? 
remember watching that on Top of the Pops and Joe Dolce was like this rather dodgy looking man. If I remember right, he was wearing a beige overcoat, kind of Columbo stroke flasher kind of vibes it was giving you really. Anyway, this shows you what my mind does with fibro. How's yours going right now? How are you coping? Are you on lockdown like we are in the UK? How's that treating you? How's your mental health coping? I mean, for me, I'm not really noticing that much of a difference, really. Because obviously, being disabled, I didn't really go out very much anyway. Um, especially after my best mate's pub shut down. I think the last time I was in a pub was the beginning of February for a karaoke that one of my other best mates was running um, pretty much the only places I go are visiting my mates to see my god kids food shopping with the hubby and to be honest because the amount of pain that I get bless him he normally goes in with the list and tells me to wait in the car for me um, while well he goes in and does it all, bless his heart. I'm so lucky, I really am. I know there's a lot of people out there that have got disabilities that don't have husbands that are quite as understanding or partners that are as understanding. Uh, I'm fully aware how lucky I am that mine is extremely understanding. I suppose it helped that when he met me I was disabled so he knew it was wasn't like I was fitting well at the start of our relationship and then my mobility etc went, my mobility wasn't great when we met so but yeah so and sort of occasionally popping up the mother-in-laws so that's pretty much the only thing that's changed we didn't go and see the mother-in-law this weekend we were going to go and drop her some supplies up, but she reads the Daily Fail, so she rang us in a panic. Don't come up, you'll be arrested. <sighs> Alright. You don't want to see us? Fine. I think Cubby was a bit upset by that, actually. He looks forward to catching up with his family once a week, you know. Right, clean the brush off. Do you know, it's funny, there's all this stuff in the papers now about how to cope with the isolation of being at home all the time. And I'm like, bitch, please, what about all us disabled people that have been living like this for years? Where was the advice for us? Where was the compassion for us? Now that able-bodied people are suddenly suffering, all of a sudden there's all these helplines and advice and... <sighs> Don't get me started on that. Right, I'm going to dip into Big Sugar, which does have some shimmer in it. Now, the thing is with shimmers, people are scared to use them. If you use them with a fluffy brush, they will pretty much perform like a matte. You'll buff most of the shimmer pigment away because it's lighter and the matte pigment, which is more dense, will stay behind. Yes, this probably means you're going to get more fallout, but just do your base afterwards. Or if you're the wrong side of 40, you know, younger than, put powder down to catch it. Right. So, to be honest, it doesn't look that much different on the brush to sandbar. But I promise you it is. I'm just going to use this to very lightly buff along the edges and just blend that sandbar out with a slightly lighter shade. Right, the girl is. Nona is the brains behind this one. She suggested that we do a collab. Or she put out on, um, I think she put it out on Insta. 
that she wanted to do a collab using the Colourpop Nine Pan Monotone Palettes. Sorry, I've got a eyelash in that eye. Um, and did anybody want to kind of join in the series with us? So I replied to her and Laura also responded saying, yep, yeah, love that idea. So she basically said to me, uh, Laura's already said yes, do you mind doing it with both of us? I'm like, of course I don't mind, I love the idea. Um, I get so many tips from watching Laura because where she's an artist... She has so much knowledge in terms of colour theory. I mean, I put a film up about colour theory, which is what I learned from working in a print and design company. But she has much, much more knowledge than I have. I learned so much from her. She put a film up shortly after the um, Aha Honey palette came out and showed you how to use different colours to blend with the yellow to deepen it up without making it go muddy and I had never been able to do purple and yellow together before without it going muddy until I followed her directions um, and she recently did one where she was teaching the difference between warm and cool blues and then likewise warm and cool reds and how they make warm and cool purples so you can learn a hell of a lot from her you really can and it's like she's got such a delicate little voice she's like she's like Titania Queen of the Fairies from uh, Midsummer Night's Dream that's what I think of her as now that sounds daft but I don't care Alright, I'm going to go down to a slightly smaller blending brush. I'm going to go down to the JS12. Much more contained because I want to have more control about how far I blend out. And I'm going to pop into... Please excuse my throat growling. I'm going to pop into Opulent. And use this just to deepen up closer to the crease yeah so it was Nona's idea and I was like yeah absolutely love it brilliant love Laura let's do this and regular viewers will know that I've collabed with Nona a lot you know we are part of the bitches of Eastwick I consider her and Anya my two YouTube wifeys. Um, we just we talk, if not every day, every other day, on Insta. Um, and I consider her a very good friend, and I consider myself lucky to have her as a friend. Um, she's one of the most genuine individuals on YouTube she will always find something positive to say about a look you have done even if you hate it she will find something positive about it that you've done well or that you've improved upon I don't think I've ever seen her leave a negative comment or even a neutral comment on anybody it's always been positive supportive uh, if they've asked for constructive criticism she does it in such a nice way you don't even realize that it's constructive criticism <laughs> it's like she's just a really lovely woman um, I just I wish we lived closer but obviously the three continents is that I'm in Europe Known is in America. My lovely Laura is in New Zealand. So she's in the future for me. Known as in the past.
<laughs> it's currently ow, four o'clock in the UK. No, half past three. My clock in the kitchen's wrong. Um, half past three in the UK. Which means for Laura, I think she's she twelve or fourteen hours in front of me. So it'll either be like 4am or 6am where Laura is tomorrow, Monday. Um, and Nona, I think, is six hours behind me. So that'll be half nine in the morning for her. I'm just in the shower at that point. Had a lazy day today. Normally we do our food shopping on a Sunday. Um, but we're actually going to do it on Monday instead. So neither of us just neither, the alarm went off this morning and I looked at Chris and he looked at me and we just went nah. Because obviously we've been getting up at four o'clock all week or half four. Because he's been on early's because his job he works at a hardware store. So that's classed as essential. Because obviously if your loo breaks or oh, you know, your roof tile comes off, because it is actually quite windy out there today. You need to be able to fix it. So... Right, I'm going to go into Caddy. So I've used this middle row. Now I'm coming into this one. And I'm just going to use this on the outer corner going about halfway along just to deepen up the outer edge there but I hope you can see I've got a really nice gradient going on of those pinks which is looking actually prettier than I was expecting I will admit I didn't expect there to be that much difference once it was blended out because sometimes when you blend colours out they do look very very similar together I'm doing a bit of a a wooshy wispy woofy wingy type thing because I'm still struggling with um, hay fever and watery eyes from fibro and my eyes have always been sensitive anyway but by doing a wing when you deepen up your eyeshadow like this and bringing it down onto the outer third of the eyelid it gives the same illusion it still lengthens and lifts the outer edge of the eye I hope you can see the difference between the two there I hope It's been a bit of a weird day weather-wise, it's sort of, we have almost like 30 seconds of ridiculously hard rain and the sun comes back out for an hour or so and all of a sudden it's, it's almost like a cloud comes over and goes, yeah I'll have that <laughs> and then goes back for a refill. It's very strange, very strange weather to say. But um, I mean, normally this time of year is full of rain and dullness, and of course, while well, we've got this bloody, can't go anywhere. It's the most beautiful weather. It's it's the kind of weather where I, I like to go for a drive. Because obviously, I can't go for a walk anymore. I just can't get very far. Um, and I would normally, you know, pack some sandwiches, pack it a crisp, bottle of water, head out for a drive somewhere. But, you know, all of the places that you would normally go to are kind of closed. All of the, I used to go and sit, there's a, 
place just up the road from me. When I say just up the road, it's about five miles, I suppose. But it's like a country park on the river. It's just, it's just an open stretch of greenery where people walk their dogs. But it's right on the river, and it's it's lovely in spring and summer. You get that breeze coming off of the water, and you just sit there. And, but I was, um, I'd imagine that's shut at the moment. I wouldn't think they'd be open. You know, you've got to keep six foot away from people unless you live in the same household and can't have more than two people together and good unless it's the same household. It's just I really hope that at the end of three weeks it's been worth it and that it has actually, you know, slowed down the rate of infection. Because if it hasn't, I can see us being stuck like this for a considerable, considerable length of time more than we are currently experiencing. And to be quite honest, I don't know how a lot of UK businesses will actually be able to get through that. Right, I'm going to go in with the Jeffrey Lip Brush. This is the JS24. I like it because you see that point it comes down to? That's great for getting into your inner corner. And I'm going to go into Moon Struck, which is the, uh, the golden shimmer down here. Which, if I remember right, has got a hint of peach, peachy pink to it. Right, now I have applied the pigment to the brush. I'm going to wet it with a new... You see how long these Gerard Slayer days last for? I know they're more expensive, but they're really worth it. Um, I usually use a cheaper spray for doing this, but... The jasmine one, for some reason, dries my jawline out. Nowhere else on my face, just my jawline. So, I'm going to use it for wetting my pigments instead. And I'm going to use this. To cover the remaining two-thirds of the lid that so far were pigmentless. They are pigmentless, no longer. The um, cloth that I used just had my cellar water on it, by the way, in case you're wondering. Just to tidy the edges up there. And I'm going to use the very tips of the bristles here, just to blend it very lightly into that mat on the edge there. Dry the brush off because you don't go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will end up killing it. I am going to do, I've been asked to do a, one of my mini films on hard pan. What it is, what causes it and how to get rid of it. Um, and that is, hard pan is the reason that I say don't go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. In case you were wondering. Now I always dry this ferrule off by popping it into my knuckles and just spinning it. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here. Because it will just literally loosen the glue. And then it won't be a brush anymore. Now, with this eye you can see I've got a super deep crease in here. So I do have to very gently stretch the lid out this side because if I don't, what happens is that instead of the pigment being blended out nicely like this I get a lot of it sort of collects in those deep creases and then as it dries out through the day and I move my eye it ends up getting, it starts cascading down my face, it gets into my eye um, I start getting multicoloured freckles, which, if that's the look you're going for, on one side only, then, you know, crack on. But, but um, I mean, the reason that I'm showing you this 
is because you could see I only pulled it out as far as I needed to. I didn't pull it right out to my ear roll. And as soon as the area that was affected was covered, I let go. And I'm just feathering this end bit here, blending it in. There. This is coming out much prettier than I anticipated. But it could still go very, very wrong. Very, 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 very wrong. So, I, my darlings, am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and bits and bobs on. And I'll be back to continue the face look. Because I'm going to need to show you doing my bronzer and blush for a change, aren't I? Yes, I am. Right. Um... I'm going to have to wait a little bit before I can speak to you again. Uh, you, however, no delay. It's going to be instant. Ooh, I know I'm looking ridiculously ghosty, but that's because I have foundationed and I have concealed and I have powdered, but I have not added any colour back in. So, I'm going to grab this dual fibre um, Primark brush actually. And I'm going to kind of try and squidge all the brush together so that I only keep it in soft core, really. Ooh, this is actually causing quite a bit of kick up. Alright, okay. I'm going to attempt to use this where I would use my bronzer. And I'm just going to hope that it's not too pink. See, normally this is one of the pinks that I would have gone in with. I like the transition shade and then put the the brighter pinks on over the top, but do you know what? That's actually not that bad. Um, along the, as Paige would say from seeing Alexandria, the Chalupa Chin. I have no idea what a chalupa chip is, but I like the sound of it. I am feeling an ever so slightly frank and furtherish right now. Okay, this, this is not actually as bad as I was expecting it to be. And then I've got a big old powder brush. This is a Soeco one. And I'm going to dip that into Poodle. And uh, shake it off a little bit. And then... Yes, I always put a little bit on my temples and across my nose because that's where the sun hits me. Okay, so I've gone uh, very pink on the cheeks today, but... Even worse, I could have used one of the brighter ones. Okay, do you know what? I actually don't hate that. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I'll probably do a jump cut for the zoom in because it always takes me ages to get the angle just right. So, get ready for a close up for the brows. Right. Soap brows. People have oft asked how I do mine. So, get the little brush. Which will get very gummed up. And basically, quite firmly, brush your brow hairs up and into the kind of brow shape that you want. like so and then grab a if you haven't got that set you can just use an ordinary bar of soap and the spoolie off of the other end of your brow brush now so far I have used this one this one on my face these four five on my eyes I'm now going to go into this one for my brows and then that one for my highlight and then I've used them all. Yay! I'm going into Trove. I'm literally just pressing the brush into that and then just very lightly applying it over your soaped brows. I have started to do this rather than use my um, pomades and my gel liners that I was using because a lot of people were saying Revolution don't seem to be selling those pomades at the moment. I don't know if they're getting rid of them or reformulating them or bringing them back for summer or what they're doing. But people were like, we really like the coloured brow look, how can we achieve it? This is one of the ways you can do net. Now obviously, using an eyeshadow, you're going to need something that will hold it in place. So in this case, the soap is holding it. If you don't like doing the soap brows, you can do your brows whatever colour you want and then use a clear brow gel or a clear mascara just to help hold the colour in place through the day. Please bear in mind though that if as with my pomades, if a particular eyeshadow stains your eyelid, pretty damn good chance it's going to stain your brow as well. I've uh, worked up with pink brows quite a few times recently, but you know what? I love it. Like a so. That is the bra you've done. And now this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably ten years ago. And I'm going to go into the final colour that I've not used yet, tickled. 
I'm going to pop some of that under the tail of my brow. Regular viewers know I like to bring mine along. Oh, I haven't done my under eye yet. I'll do that in just a moment. I got carried away. I was going to say, bring it along underneath and blend it with the colour that I put underneath the eye. And I haven't put a colour under there yet. Silly me, silly me. Right. I'm going to grab a Morphe M139. Hey, baby, I'm recording. Oh. Hello there. So be careful what you say. <laughs> I will be. And I think I will go into. Might go into Trove, which is the colour that I used on my brow, and just pop that on the outer edge, like so. You done out there now? Yeah, I've had a bit of a sort out in the garden. I'm, I'm not really going to bother with that broken fence panel that's smashed up because I destroy that anyway. Well, we'll have a burn up at some point. Exactly. I've got a load of old paperwork needs getting rid of, so rather than shred it, we can burn it if you want. Sounds a lot more fun. That's what I thought. And then I'm going to go into, I think, Soft Core, which is the one that I used as my bronzer. And run that along the rest. There we go. <coughs> right, my lovelies, I will pause you while I do my mascara because my eyes are starting to run. <sighs> Probably because I've just had a load of pollen come in from the back door. Um, a bit polleny out there. Yeah, and you've been disturbing things by mowing and whatnot. So, right, so I'm going to pause just while I do my mascara, and then I'll be back to show you how I tackle this on the lips, as we've got to use it for everything, um, and the finished look. So I don't go anywhere. See you right now. I left you zoomed in because I wanted you to see what I've done with my mascara. Now, I've used my usual Revolution Blowout Mascara, but then I got, I've got a load of these clean individual throwaway spoolies, and I used Jeffrey's Diva lipstick from the Family Collection, and just put some pink on the tips of the top lashes. What do you think? How cute is that, huh? Huh? How cute! Right, using Jeffrey's lip brush again. I'm going to go into, I think, Caddy, which is the colour that I used on the upper lid here. And I'm going to try brushing it on dry. As I said, I don't actually have any Duraline that I could mix with it. to make into a proper paste. The only thing I've got is a pigment mixer and the ingredients on that I don't like the look of for putting near my lips and potentially ingesting. But, 
is going on quite well. I am getting full out on my chin of all places. Good grief. Okay. And now I'm going to grab cotton bud or Q-tip or whatever you want to call them in your country. And I'm going to grab some of Jeffrey's gloss in saucer which is the baby pink one from his uh, most recent release and I'm going to pop some of that onto the q-tip and that way I don't get anything in the liquid itself Smudge them together. Do you know what? That's actually not that bad. Okay. There'll be a jump cut in just a moment because I'm going to sort out the fallout on my chin, do something with my hair, and I'll be back with the absolute finished final look. Whew. Would you look how curly my hair is going? <laughs> look at that. Do you know what? I will admit I was kind of dreading doing this particular one because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to use pink as my bronzer. But do you know what? I think because I'm because my skin is neutral to cool toned, I think I actually get away with it. And popping that bit of gloss over the top of the powder that I put on my lips, A, it stops it from feeling like the Sahara Desert, and it gives it a really nice kind of reflect and and looks more like it's meant to be on my lips rather than just, well, what, what has she got on her lips? So... This is my finished look using Ooh La La to do all of the colour, apart from the mascara obviously, on my face, but I did give myself pink tipped lashes. That is a tip for you, if you've got a lipstick that you've bought, check that it's eye safe. All of Jeffrey's ones are eye safe. The red and pink ones say they're technically not but that's just because they can stain um, but if you've got a bright lipstick that you bought and you're like oh <laughs> not sure I'm ever gonna actually be brave enough to wear that use it as mascara use it as a liner you know grab yourself an artist brush and use it to do eyeliner with um, I mean, Jeffrey's ones I've used in the waterline as well, um, without too much irritation, although we all know what my eyes like for anything on the waterline. It hasn't reacted any worse than a product that's designed for the waterline has done. If that makes any sense at all. Oh, and to finish it off with, as we're doing pink, my rose slay all day. Hmm. 
actually, do you know what? I think I'm going to stick some highlight on my cheeks. I'm going to go into that tickled and just pop a little bit. Yeah, that works. Hello. This is one of my Royal and Langnickel brushes, by the way. It's the Chic Pro. Which one is this? Oh, it's the highlighter brush. I'm actually using a brush for what it's meant to be used for. Who knew? Because let's face it, I used a powder brush for blusher and a blusher brush for bronzer and bronzer for contour. That's better. I didn't feel me without my highlight. So. Using just the Ulala La palette, you can get, if you forget to bring your bronzer and blush with you, you can actually get a decent look with it. Who knew? Right, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed because it is still Game of Thrones out there. You turn around and another one or two or four or five have been chopped off the back of the queue. So, double check you are still safely ensconced into the 4F family. And if you're missing a limb, you've definitely been chopped. <laughs> Wise words from the husband. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> coming through, coming through. You can't just talk to them and not come and say hello. Hello. How See? are we doing? He's not just a disembodied voice. He exists really? in corporeal form. That would be quite scary, wouldn't it? Mm. If, if I popped in with a sheet on my head with eyes cut in it and went woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> I'd, I'd test your temperature. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a pointy bit on the sheet though, because that would just be offensive, and no one wants that. <laughs> right. Once you have double checked, you are still safely ensconced in the 4F family. Please do give this a like. Let me know in the comments section below how well or otherwise you think I did what would you have done if you were given this challenge do you have this palette do you like this palette it's, I think this was the first one of the monotone palettes they released and I'm pretty sure they released it on October the whatever the date is from Mean Girls is it Mean Girls? On Wednesdays, we went pink. He asked me what the date was, and I said, October the 9th, 10th? I don't know. Tell me in the comments below, please. Oh, got to love fibro. You start a comment, and then your brain decides to have a fart midway through, and you completely forget what the rest of the sentence was. So, do please give me a like, give me a comment below, and once you have done all those good YouTuber -y things, I'm going to need you to go across to the lovely Nona and the lovely Laura and check out their versions. Now remember, Nona has the ooh -la, la palette. Laura is duping it with other palettes and shades that she has in her collection. So, please go and watch both of their films. Do all the good YouTuber things with them as well. Give them a like, give them a nice comment if you're not already subscribed to them. I'm sorry, why not? This is, I think, the seventh one of these we've done. They are amazing ladies and you are missing out by not being subscribed to their channels. So, you know, hit that red subscribe button, join their grand gangs too and just... Have fun guys, it, it, life's too short, we're all stuck indoors, let's all catch up and watch people's videos and give nice supportive comments, huh? help people grow their channels. Now, if you are here from either Laura or Nona's channel, hi, hello, welcome, uh, it's not always this crazy, uh, sometimes it is, sometimes there are hats. Sometimes they're not. Always there is the craziness that is this half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird though. 
but if you've made it this far through the film I'm guessing there was something you liked so feel free to join the 4F family again it's super easy you hit that subscribe button um, then you ring the bell and YouTube asks you about a million times are you sure you want notifications and once you've said yes to all of the times they ask you hopefully you'll get notified of at least one in every four of my films I put up because gone are the halcyon days when we could just like a channel and it would appear in our newsfeed and we'd get notifications about when they put a new film up chill right Speaking of other films, I do have an awful lot that you can choose from, not just the six other films in this particular series, which are in the playlist, Three Continents, One Palette. But there are also many other playlists that you can choose from. And as I have said, and has oft been echoed by other channels with less imagination, <laughs> hmm. Yes, that was sass, and yes, if you heard it, that was my stomach grumbling, because it suddenly realised that it's 20 past four, and lunch has not happened yet, so that, that will be happening shortly. It'll be a late lunch. Kind of. Early tea time. Anyway, um, as I have said many, many times now, grab a drink, grab a snack. Put your feet up and indulge. Uh, but if you choose the relax playlist, you might find you end up going to sleep. So maybe choose a different one first. <laughs> uh, yeah, unless of course you need to sleep, in which case crack on. Right, my darlings, that's quite enough blethering for me for one minute. I still need to film the intro for this. And uh, then it's time to have some late lunch. So... As always, all that remains for me to say, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.